Carl Calvert here to talk to you and explain how to cream butter. Creaming process is one of the most important processes when doing a baked good. Creaming butter or creaming a solid fat requires two basic ingredients to start off. It's a solid fat, which could be butter, which could be lard, which could be margarine, and some type of sugar, whether it be brown sugar or white sugar. The purpose of creaming is to incorporate the two items so you can't identify one from the other. What it does, it incorporates air, increases volume in the finalized baked good, as well as um, lightens the product. Butter is most often used because it has different ingredients. Butter is about 80% fat, 13% water. That 13% water is important because that water helps dissolve the sugar so you get this more icing type consistency. If you use a margarine or you use a lard, it doesn't have that, it requires a little bit more effort, a little bit more manhandling in order to achieve proper creaming method. Some basic essentials for creaming. The butter has to be room temperature. At 100 degrees Fahrenheit to 95 degrees Fahrenheit, butter is liquid. At room temperature, it is still solid, but it's somewhat fluid. We can't use that for creaming. What I've done is I've taken some butter and let it sit out for the afternoon. You'll notice just by dropping it, it compresses and it has great softness and it's going to incorporate in the sugar a little bit better. However, if you are called upon to make a baked item and you don't have time to soften your butter or bring it out ahead of time, you can cut it in the one tablespoon measurements, place it in the microwave as long as they're equal sizes and hit it for 10 to 12 seconds at a time, doing that four to five times and achieve the same consistency. If that's not an option, you can actually take your butter and you can grate it. You take your hard butter and a box grater and just shave up and down. And it being so small like this, it tempers, which is a fancy term for softening, in a matter of minutes. This has the same consistency as the one stick of butter that I took out an hour ago. However, I just grated this five minutes ago and it's the same consistency. It's excellent for the creaming process. When creaming butter, we want to add the butter and the sugar to a basic stand mixer. If it's too cold, you may even actually want to warm up your bowl. And what I did previously is add about two cups of hot water to this bowl, let it sit for one to two minutes to take out some of the coldness. And now we have a bowl which is the same temperature as the butter. I'm going to add my sugar as well. There are some ratios to keep in mind. Traditionally, if you're making a cookie, you have about a two to one ratio. Two parts butter to one part sugar. Some more enriched batters require much more sugar. If you're dealing with a ratio that is one to one, meaning one cup of butter to one cup of sugar, it may not cream as well. If that's the case, add small amounts of sugar initially, and as it starts to cream and starts to get softened, you continually add more sugar until it's all incorporated. Other than that, the process for creaming is the same. When creaming butter and sugar, you have two options. You can use a paddle, which incorporates air and also creams efficiently, or you can use a whisk. Most people use a whisk. However, if you're going to add the remaining ingredients, which would be your flour, your uh, ingredients such as uh, eggs, as well as chocolate chips, you may actually break your whisk because the batter becomes very, very thick. That's why in most industrial kitchens, you use a paddle. It incorporates all items without causing any damage to the whisk itself. Primarily, this would be good for whipping egg whites. Now that we've got our bowl and our attachment, we want to cream. An important factor as well is to make sure that you constantly scrape down every two to three minutes in order to make sure that the sugar and the butter is thoroughly incorporated. At this point, at this point you can see how the sugar and the butter is incorporated. However, there's some lighter spots here. This is where butter did not get incorporated. So it's important, it's imperative that I take this product off. I scrape it down thoroughly and completely. So I'll remove the entire paddle, scrape all the sides down and incorporate. The principal reason for incorporation of the sugar and butter with a rubber spatula is so as not to have small amounts of butter sitting by itself. So why does that matter? Because you'll create something called a butter burn. And a butter burn is when you've had a cookie or you had a baked good and one side of it collapses after the baking process and it looks like a little avalanche or a lava slide. 
What that is, is butter that did not get incorporated with the sugar, and it has a different melting point. Once you add sugar and butter together, the melting point is increased. If butter's by itself at 80 degrees to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, it starts to liquefy, and that's why you know if it's been incorporated or not. We've now been creaming for three to five minutes. We're gonna take it off and look at it. At this point, you'll notice there's a great lightening of the actual butter. There's increased volume. We've gone about 30 to 40%, meaning it's about 50% larger than it was. And in about another two to three more minutes, we should have maximum volumization of the actual product. I will scrape it down, continue to whisk until we've achieved creaming consistency. At this point, it's gone about nine total minutes. If you examine the product, it's about doubled in size, nice light consistency, lighter color, and almost an icing type texture. We're ready for the additional baked good item to add the ingredients of flour, eggs, and add-ins. Proper incorporation of butter and sugar for creaming is important to get a successful finalized product when baking.